this video, we'll explore how to do hypothesis testing and confidence intervals on differences from dependent samples or match pairs design. So let's just go through an example. There are eight pairs of slow learners matched in pairs according to similar reading IQs that are found. One member of each pair is randomly assigned to a standard method while the other is assigned to a new method. The data is given below. So even though each pair is a different person, these, each pair of learners is paired according to their IQs and they're paired before the data is gathered. So a matched pairs design is appropriate in this example. So the research question is going to be, does the data support the hypothesis that the population mean reading test score for our slow learners taught by the new method is greater than the meaning, mean reading test score for those taught by the standard method. And we're gonna to wanna to test this at an alpha value of 5% or 5% significance level. Um, our hypothesis is that the means aren't different, that the, first, uh, the mean for the new method is the same as the mean for the standard method. And our alternative is that the mean is higher under the new method. Alternatively, we can write this as a difference and do this as a paired difference test. So if we're doing this by hand, we're gonna first calculate the differences. So if we look at the very first row of data, the first row shows that under the, for the first pair of people, the mean reading test score was 77 for the first person and 72 for the second person using the old method or standard method for a difference of five. Even though in this sample, all the differences are positive, it is entirely possible that the new method for one pair of learners might be lower than the standard method, in which case the difference would be negative. So it's entirely possible to have differences that are positive or negative. Um, from this, we're gonna use the sample size of eight, eight differences, the five, six, six, five, three, one, five, four, and just do a regular t-test. We're doing a t-test because the sample size is small and sigma is unknown. We don't know the population standard deviation of these differences. Um, we are going to need to assume that the population of these differences is normal, um, as we typically have to assume with small samples, because the central limit theorem doesn't apply. So recall that before when we did a t-test, we took the average um, to find the test statistic t. We found the average, subtracted the mean under HO, and divided by the standard error, s over the square root of n. We're gonna do the same thing for the differences, but change the subscript slightly to account for the fact these are differences we're looking at. So our test statistic for differences for a matched pairs design will be the average sample difference minus the difference under HO divided by the sample standard deviation of differences um, over the square root of the sample size, so eight in our example. Um, also, under the null hypothesis, we're saying that there is no difference under the null hypothesis, so that D subscript zero symbol is actually just going to be zero for our example. So we're going to do um a, we're going to do this two different ways. The first way is just using a very limited amount of technology. We'll just use the technology to find the summary statistics, the sample means, the sample sizes, which we can just count and uh, the sample standard deviation, which we really do not want to do by hand. So use Excel or StatCrunch or a, a TI-8384 calculator or any way that you've done before to, use some, to calculate summary statistics. So uh, the average of the differences, um, I did this using StatCrunch, was uh, 4.375. The standard deviation was about 1.7. And our sample size, we can easily see, is 8. So then we're gonna plug these values into the test statistic formula. And from that, we get that uh, our test statistic is approximately 7.344. Now we can use the t-table to find the critical value. So here's just an abbreviated form of the t-table. Um, our degrees of freedom is just our sample size minus one. So that would be seven. So we'll go across the seventh row and we were told to test this at a 5% significance level. And since this is a right tail test, we don't have to divide it by two or anything weird like that. So we'll just go down the 0.05 column. 
and our, t our critical value would be 1.895. And it is positive because it's a right tail test. If it was a left tail test, it would be negative. So for a right tail test, we're going to reject if our test statistic is bigger than our critical value. And we fail to reject if it's not uh, greater than that, so if it's less than it. Since our test statistic 7.3 is bigger than the 1.895, we're going to reject HO. Let's approach this again, but using technology. So depending on what software you use, um, the table that I'm showing here is done using StatCrunch. Um, there are two different ways to do this. One of them is you could actually just calculate the differences. Um, most software has a feature where you can do mathematical operations on a data table. So just subtract row one minus, or sorry, column one minus column two, and just do a standard t-test. Alternatively, in StatCrunch and many other statistical softwares, there is actually an option to do a t-test on differences for a paired sample. Usually it's called paired, um, but it could be called dependent samples. Um, so that's how I did this data table. I made sure to select the alternative hypothesis that the mean difference was greater than zero. And then um, we just get the p-value. Um, here the p-value is very small. It's uh, 0.0000 something. I think it's 0 0.00008. So the software just writes that as less than 0 0.0001. So our p-value is approximately 0 0.001. It's 0001 rather. Um, it's a little bit less than that, but that's okay. We can use that. Um, so our if our alpha value is bigger than our p-value, we know we reject HO. If our alpha is less than the p-value, we fail to reject HO. Same rules as always. So since our alpha value is bigger than our p-value, we reject HO. So at the 5% significance level, there is sufficient evidence that the true mean reading test score for all slow learners is higher than those that is higher for those that use the new method over the standard method. So this is very promising. If you were implementing this new method, there's evidence that it is better than the older method. Um, we can also look at confidence intervals for differences. Remember that before, um, the way we do a confidence interval is we take our sample mean and add and subtract the margin of error. So now we're going to look at the sample mean difference and add and subtract the margin of error. For large samples, um, it's just going to be z, our critical value, times sigma over square root of n. And if we don't know sigma, which we usually we don't, we just use s over square root of n. For large samples, remember s is a good approximation, and we wouldn't need to make any um, assumptions about the population. But for small samples, we do need to assume that the population is normal, just like we always have. And um, we have to use the t distribution, since s is not such a great approximation for sigma anymore. Um, all right, so these were our sample statistics from before on the differences. Um, our degrees of freedom is the same as before, 7. Uh, our confidence level um, is 95%, which means alpha would be 5%. So alpha over 2, because remember confidence intervals are two-tailed, would be half of that, so 0.025. Looking at the T table, we still go down the seventh row, but now we go down the 0.025 column since it's two tailed because all confidence intervals are two tailed for this course. So plug that into the formula. Our margin of error is going to be 2.365 times the standard deviation, 1.685 over the square root of n, which is approximately 1.4. So add and subtract that from the sample mean difference and we get 2.966 to 5.784 as our confidence interval, which means we are 95% confident that the mean difference between reading test scores for all slow learning uh, students um, between the new method and the standard method falls between three points and 5.8 points, just a little bit of rounding there. So just a few uh, conditions or assumptions that we need to make in order for these inferences to be valid. For our samples, we need to have the samples be random samples of differences selected from the target population of differences. Truth be told, it doesn't have to be a purely random sample, but it has to be unbiased and it has to be representative of the population. Um, the second set of assumptions really only applies if we're dealing with small samples. So for a small sample, we have to assume that the population has a distribution that's approximately normal. If not, there is a way to get around this. You can use the Wilcoxon signed rank test, but that's beyond the scope of the class. 
however it is in your textbook if you're interested. For large samples, sample sizes um, where the differences are at least 30, there's at least 30 different sets of differences. Um, you don't need to make any assumptions about the population because the central limit theorem applies. And the sample standard deviation of differences will be a good approximation for the population standard deviation. So we're good. We can just use the z distribution. We won't have to use the t.